Thank you. Hello, everyone. So uh, today we will present uh, a new version of our uh, journalistic uh, tree bank, annotated with uh, verbal multi-word expressions of uh, four types: uh, idioms, uh, verbal um, uh, light verb constructions, um, inherently reflexive verbs, and uh, inherently appositional verbs. The last type being recently added uh, to our tree bank. These uh, types uh, have been defined and classified in a multilingual setting, the Parsim uh, Corpora, and uh, we will briefly uh, describe the context in which the um, uh, creation of the Romanian tree bank uh, took place. We will discuss the characteristics of the verbal multi-word expressions uh, with a special reference to um, uh, the challenges they raise uh, for the um, automatic interpretation, but uh, also uh, for the human usage. We will uh, uh, present general data about the Romanian corpus and uh, also the annotation levels, as uh, Romanian took part in all the three shared uh, tasks of uh, the Parsim Coast Action. Uh, special uh, interest uh, uh, will be uh, given to the annotation of uh, inherently appositional verbs. Uh, we will discuss the methodology we use and uh, also uh, the challenges they raised. Next, uh, we will offer statistics on the verbal multi-word expression types in our tree bank and in the end, uh, we will discuss the conclusions and uh, further research perspectives. Uh, Parsim is an international and multilingual community. The Parsim Coast Action took place between uh, 2013 and 2017, and now uh, it is a section of SIGLEX, uh, SIGLEX, the special interest group on the lexicon of the Association for uh, Computational Linguistics. Uh, the process um, uh, focused on the annotation of uh, multi-word expressions in corpora, as well as their uh, automatic identification. So far, only verbal, uh, verbal multi-word expressions uh, have been annotated, but um, expressions of other morphological classes uh, will be approached from uh, multilingual perspectives. There have been three editions of this shared task, and um, the verbal multi-word expressions have been manually annotated. Um, the three editions covered uh, 18, 20, and 14 uh, languages from uh, the several language families. Multi-word expressions are defined as uh, continuous or discontinuous sequences of words with uh, the following uh, compulsory properties. They show some degree of uh, orthographic, morphological, syntactic, or semantic idiosyncrasy with uh, respect uh, to what is considered general grammar rules of a language. Their component words include a head word and at least uh, one other syntactically related word. Most often, the relation they maintain is a syntactic, direct or indirect dependence, but it can also be, for example, a coordination. At least two components of such a word sequence have to be lexicalized. And the most salient property of multi-word expressions is semant semantic non-compositionality. The perceived annotation guidelines classify these uh, verbal multi-word expressions into four major categories. The first one contain universal categories uh, that are valid for all languages participating in the task. Uh, this is uh, divided into subclasses, light verb constructions, and verbal idioms. Light verb uh, constructions um, are of two types, LVC full, where the verb is semantically totally bleached, like in English, to give a lecture, and in Romanian, allow a decisie to make a decision. And the second type, LVC cause, uh, here, the verb adds a causative meaning to the noun, as in to give a headache, or in Romanian, adabatei de cap, to give a bad time. 
In um, the class of verbal idioms, uh, we have all the verbal multi-word expressions not belonging to other categories and uh, more often having uh, a high degree of semantic non-compositionality as in English to go bananas or in Romanian atrage pe sfoară to double cross. The second major category of uh, verbal multi-word expressions contains uh, quasi-universal categories which are valid only for some of the languages. The inherently reflexive verbs where the reflexive clitic either always co-occurs with a given verb or changing its uh, meaning or uh, subcategorization frame as in English to help oneself and in Romanian asegundi to think, se is the reflexive clitic. The second subtype, verb particle constructions or um, uh, the phrasal verbs in English, like uh, to do in, to eat up. This category is not applicable to Romanian, as well as the next one, multiverb constructions, which um, are made of um, a sequence of two verbs, uh, a governor verb and um, a dependent verb, like in English, to let go and uh, to make do. The third uh, class is actually an optional and uh, experimental category annotated in the post uh, annotation step. It consists of uh, inherently adpositional verbs. They are made up of a verb and um, an idiomatic selected preposition, uh, like in English, to rely on, and uh, in Romanian, a contape. As uh, we have uh, already mentioned, this um, type of verbal multi-word expressions ha uh, is, um, has been recently uh, annotated uh, in our corpus. And the last type contains language-specific categories, which are valid only for the language for which they are defined, unless uh, other languages claim uh, it as well. And uh, uh, so far, only um, um, a class uh, has been annotated, uh, namely inherent liclitic verbs for Italian that uh, contain a verb and one or more non-reflexive clitics, like in uh, Italian, infischiarsene, not to worry about. The identification of uh, verbal multi-word expression in text, it's a well-known challenge for uh, NLP applications because of their special uh, characteristics, such as discontinuity, overlaps, non-compositionality, heterogeneity, syntactic uh, variability. Uh, they are problematic not only for machines, but also for humans. So on the one hand, for students learning a second language, and uh, on the other hand, for native speakers who are exposed to rarer expressions. One key characteristic uh, for a verbal multi-word expression is for it to be idiomatic. And uh, this property is uh, defined as a markedness or a deviation uh, from um, um, <clears throat> um, the, the usual uh, uh, component components and it applies at the lexical, syntactic, semantic, pragmatic and or uh, statistical levels. Uh, the lexical um, idiomaticity applies when uh, one or more components are not used uh, outside the respective verbal multi-word expressions like um, aminte in asha duce aminte to remember uh, or habar in ave habar uh, to have a clue. Uh, on the morphological level, uh, there are restrictions on the paradigmatic realization of the verbal head with respect to uh, one or more uh, morphosyntactic features like person, number, mood, tense, uh, polarity. Uh, and we have here uh, an example, anu privi cu ochi bun, to regard with disfavor, uh, which is always used with uh, the negative marker nu. In addition, there are verbal multi-word expressions um, that display uh, obsolete inflectional and derived forms, uh, as in uh, the example abate câmpi, to beat around the bush, in which câmp is an old plural form of the word uh, câmp, Field, whose current plural form is câmpuri. 
um, the syntactic uh, idiomaticity uh, arises when the syntax of the verbal multi-word expression is not derived directly from that of its uh, components. On the syntactic level of descriptions, um, this uh, syntactic level includes uh, any word order of um, uh, the components and uh, of their uh, dependence. For example, uh, in the expression adaortul popi, to give the coin to the priest, which is to die, the direct object or tool always precedes the indirect objects uh, popi, although Romanian allows for a free order uh, for direct and the indirect object uh, when they co occur. And uh, the key feature of the verbal multi word expressions, the non compositionality, um, arises when um, uh, some components of the verbal multi word expressions have uh, additional meanings, like the metaphoric meaning, alua taurul de coarne, to take the bull by the horns the hyperbolic meaning, acrapa de fric, to be very cold, or uh, metronymic uh, meaning, a nu ridica un deget, not to lift a finger. I got this, I think I got this. Is it okay like this? Okay, so. Um, uh, the parsing corpus is made up of journalistic texts and uh, has been initially automatically tokenized, part of the speech tagged, uh, lemmatized, and syntactically parsed. So uh, there have been, uh, th there were two uh, main steps of the annotation that I will talk about them both. Um, so the first step. Uh, is uh, a manual annotation for all the three um, types of expression seen uh, in this slide. We would have respectively four, three, or two linguist annotators that use the flat platform to identify and classify potential verbal multi-word expressions and um, uh, specify their type um, after the parsing guidelines uh, to ensure uh, inter annotator agreement, we will have double annotation for a small portion of the da data. And then to uh, uh, assure for consistency, you would have consistency checking tools that were made available by, by the organizers, organizers that were used. Uh, so the second step of the annotation is the introduction of inherently appositional verbs, uh, which mainly uh, are uh, so uh, essential for inherently adpositional verbs is their preposition. So if you delete their preposition, their meaning is changed, as can be seen in the parsing guidelines. Um, selected preposition, if absent, changes the meaning of the verb of the verbal multi-word ex uh, expression significantly. Significantly, so we could say that a test for uh, IAVs is deleting the preposition, and if the meaning is changed, you have an inherently adpositional verb. Uh, this has been done also for Gaelic and Italian. And um, the first part of the annotation was done automatically, so you would have a verb list created by Jana, and all the occurrences of the adpositional verbs uh, were found in the corpus by a Python script. Um, they were identified and classified. Um, afterwards, you would have two linguistic, uh, linguistics annotators that would validate the corpus if they could change the size or even delete uh, the um, adpositional uh, uh, verb if it was the case. Uh, the second, uh, so after validation comes correction. So if the um, annotators agree, the um, cases were considered correct, which happened in, mo in almost 3,000 3, cases, uh, which is seen in the table in the both annotators section. Uh, if the annotators disagreed, you would have uh, two linguist experts uh, experienced, sorry, experienced in the parsing guidelines that would uh, further check the cases. And this, um, 
this automatically annotation is uh, very useful because we successfully identify two thirds of inherently adpositional verbs um, uh, in this way, which amounts to um, which amounts to 94% of the total cases of inherently adpositional verbs that should have been annotated. Okay. Um, what, uh, what were the challenges, if any? I will just explain briefly homonymy. So um, part of speech, um, part of speech, uh, so part of speech tag would be done uh, wrongly. For example, uh, in Scutite de Plata, exempted from payment, you would have an adjective that is of participle origin and would be wrongly identified. Um, then afterwards, the discussion, um, Important for, for IAVs is their definition uh, because you would have verbal multi-words expressions that would also have adpositional verbs within them. And also you would have uh, verbal multi-words expressions that would be adpositional in themselves. So how do you define uh, IAVs is very important. We used um, the Jana's uh, uh, definition in which adpositional construction would allow the verb to have a prepositional complement, which generates two uh, types of adpositions. You would have functional adpositions and semi-lexical adpositions. The difference between them is that while uh, functional adpositions case mark the nominal as a thematic argument of the verb, uh, semi-lexical adpositions also add uh, semantic meaning, uh, sorry, semantic context. So in Neprimbon Pealé, you would have a Pealé, which is case marked in Romanian for accused but you would also have a locative meaning uh, alongside uh, that particle. What is interesting is that only the functional positions uh, pass the parsim test. So this would generate us to propose a further refinement of uh, classification. So we'd have inherently at positional uh, verbs that are functional and semi-lexical. Uh, then in this table, you could see the size of the corpus. So how many tokens, how many verbal emas do we have? And uh, in this table, you could see the distribution of the uh, parsing corpus. So in the first place, you would have uh, inherently reflexive verbs, which amount to almost 4,000 cases. Uh, secondly, our category of the day, you would have inherently adpositional verbs, uh, a little bit over 3,000 cases. Uh, and in the case of verbal idioms, you would have uh, 1,500, uh, over a little over 1,500 uh, uh, cases. And the conclusions, um, what we present, we presented today is a new version of the parsing corpus that brings uh, a new type of verbal multi-words expressions, which is inherently appositional verbs. Uh, why is this important? Because this uh, type of expression uh, is a third of all the verbal multi-words expressions. So it's, it proves significantly statistical, statistically significant. Um, so far what we did is we annotated many verbal um, IAVs. So in the future, we um, plan to further investigate uh, others. Uh, we have also proposed a refinement of the inherently adpositional verb category, which is a, a, a subtype. So you have functional and semi-lexical. And we would also uh, like to collaborate with other teams that work on inherently adpositional verbs. Um, also, the parsing corpus, corpus is available in linked data. And I think this was it. Okay, thank you.